Good morning, beautiful people. I, first of all, throughout this video, you're probably gonna hear what sounds like trees falling down and just things being smashed because outside, there's like a bloody tropical storm. Let, let me show you. I, this doesn't do it justice, but like trees be blowing down and stuff. It's going mad outside. Look at that. A full on storm. Jeez. So I'm currently midway through making one of the best potato- Oh my god, the sound, guys. I'm actually worried my house is gonna blow away. I feel like Missy Elliott. I can't stand the rain. You know what I mean. I can't stand the rain. So yeah, I've shown you a similar version of this potato salad a couple times before, but now it's like flavor bumped up to the next level. The dressing is a lemon, ta obviously, tahini dressing, and it's the best potato salad ever. Also, I should tell you, this is kind of my second meal of the day, because guys, I know, actually, do you know what? I need to put the camera down. We need to have a full-on discussion about Sharon fruit. This bloody camera never wants to focus on my face. Why are you focusing on the wall? There we go. Um, so I know in my last video, I was kind of having, what I have been having, a bit of a mental breakdown because persimmon season is over. When I say over, it's like the ones we're getting now are just like rock hard and trash, right? What I didn't know was that Sharon fruit season has just begun. And before anyone says persimmon, Sharon fruit, it's the same thing. It's not the same thing, okay? These little babies, they're a lot smaller. They kind of look like big tomatoes and they're a lot more crisp. They're never gonna get squishy. And you know how some people eat persimmon where it's like slush? The skin of these is a lot tougher and they have kind of a crunch to them. And my God, they are the sweetest thing. Like they're actually sweeter than dates. And you know what I'm like with the sweet fruit. Once I start, there's no stopping. So this morning when I came back from the gym, I say this morning, it was about 12 o'clock, so midday. I ate, I think about eight or nine of these. I mean, they are pretty small, um, but yeah. This potato salad, holds a very special place in my heart because it was the first recipe I ever made on this channel. The video no longer exists because back then I didn't know how to edit and I looked back and I was like so embarrassed so I deleted it. But the recipe is still bomb, so yeah. And also, when you make this, even if you're making it for one person, like I'm making this just for myself, make a big batch, put it in the fridge. When the flavors mingle, it's even more delicious cold, so. It's just a win-win situation, guys. Okay, right, so these are the ingredients we need for this potato salad. We obviously have a big bowl of steamed, I, I don't want to call these white potatoes. I don't know, they're like yellow potatoes. They're very, very, like, creamy. They're the kind of potatoes you want. You don't want to use big, flavorless white potatoes. You want the little ones that are kind of yellowy inside. For once, I'm on a white potato train, guys. I don't know what's going on with me. Then we have lots and lots of fresh dill. I think this was like two packets of dill that I finally diced up. And you know what I think about dill? I've said it before and I'll say it again. If you don't like dill, number one, we can't be friends. Number two, you can fuck off. For the sauce, we need some good, runny, proper Arabic tahini. And we're also gonna need some garlic. You can of course use fresh garlic if you're not as lazy as me. Greens, you can use any greens that you like. Here I've got some tender stem broccoli or broccolini. Some green beans, they're steamed, but you don't want to oversteam them. You want them to have a little bit of crunch, if you know what I'm saying. Also, I have diced up lots of spring onion. I think in the States you call them scallions. Scallions! And also some celery for extra crunch. And then we're going to need the juice of a fresh lemon for the sauce as well. Alright, in with the celery and the spring onions. Scallions, sorry. Beautiful, pungent, fresh dill. A lake of gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous liquid gold. <laughs> Look at that. Lots of fresh lemon. And some of the green vegetable. Gonna save some back for the side as well. And we mix. God, guys, can you actually hear the rain? Alrighty, so here's my bre I was gonna say brunch, lunch, don't even know what to call it. I'm gonna give it a little sprinkle of hemp seeds for extra crunch, some omega-3s, extra protein. You guys know I put hemp seeds on absolutely everything, whether it's sweet or savory. 
Apart from sharon fruit, because they don't need it. So yeah, this half is the potato salad. I also forgot to tell you, obviously I put in salt and pepper. I'm not about to make any kind of meal without salt and pepper. Um, I don't understand these salt-free people. It's just fucking crazy. I saved back some of the steamed greens just to have extra greenage, extra greens on the side. Now this is a very creamy potato salad because obviously you've got the nutty, earthy, beautiful tahini, liquid gold, but it's also very tangy and pungent from the dill and the lemon and all of the other flavors and you get the crunch from the celery. It's just, oh, perfect. And happily applied to face. Also this morning, as per usual, I took my supplements, my B12, and I also took my Omega-3. They're both from Vivo Life. B12, I take daily. The Omega-3, I take I would say three or four times a week. I'm trying to work on, you know, making my omega-3 to 6 balance better in my diet, but I'm constantly failing because of the amount of tahini I eat. But I'm always trying my best to throw in like extra flax or chia into my smoothies or hemp seeds onto everything that I eat. You know what I mean? So yeah, I take the omega-3 just as kind of a, a good balance. And, and the B12 because I'm vegan. And like I've said before, if you're a vegan that doesn't take B12, you're not just a vegan, you're a dickhead. Anyways, I'm gonna go send the rest of this down the chute. I was gonna say I'll see you at meal number two. This kind of is meal number two. I'll see you when I next eat. Cheers. Ooh. Another thing I wanted to say was, um, it's kind of really disappointing to be very honest. Um, the amount of comments I've gotten recently about like, you know, one of my very close friends who you're gonna see in this video, like, oh my god, are you still friends with her? You know, she's not vegan anymore. How can you hang out with someone like that? And it's like, I can't believe there are people in this world that love people just for what they put in their mouth. Like, I'm telling you right now, none of my friends, none of my friends are my friends because we're just vegan. It's really sad that there are still people in this world who kind of have that division of who they hang out with based on what they send down the shoot. It makes me really sad. And the fact that I've got so many comments um, about this one person saying like, oh my God, like, are you still friends with her? Are you still gonna hang out with her because she's not vegan? And it's like, number one, I'm offended that you would even assume or question that I'm that shallow. And number two, like, get some help. And also I can have people that are very close to me that I love dearly, that I would die for, that I completely disagree with their diet choices and they know that but it doesn't mean that i'm going to stop loving them as a person do i wish the whole world was vegan yes do i wish that all of my friends and family were vegan yes if they're not am i going to cut them out of my life no because i love people for people for their personalities for their heart for their humor and that is not based on what they choose to eat so basically shut the f And a smidge of garlic infused olive oil. Alright guys, so for lunch I am whipping up, I'm in the process of whipping up a salad. One of my favourite salads of all time. I've shown you a similar recipe to this I think twice before. The original recipe is not even mine. Um, it came from the legend that is Mummy Tang. Like I think about... Thank you. Would, would you like to share that with the rest of the class? I think she made this recipe honestly like two or three years ago um, but it's become one of my staple salads because it's so satisfying, so high in protein, so delicious. It's basically a tofu kimchi salad. In her original recipe, in the way I've made it before, I didn't cook the tofu because she just kind of sliced it up and chucked it in and that's what I usually do as well but today I'm roasting the tofu in a little bit of salt, pepper, olive oil just for a little bit more crunch and flavour. And then the, the salad consists of just like lots of greens, romaine, crunch, pine nuts, kimchi, obviously it's a tofu kimchi salad. The original dressing that I usually make with this recipe and the one that was in her recipe is kind of a mix of like soy sauce, orange juice, maple syrup. It's a very light and refreshing like sweet and savory dressing. But today I'm going to switch that up and I'm going to make, if, if you watched my last video, um, you know I am now on board with mixing tahini with other ingredients to make sauce, whereas before um, I would just pour it over everything as it is. But today I am making a ginger and carrot tahini dressing to go with this. And when I tell you this is the best dressing of all time, I actually haven't made it before, but let's hope. 
tofu is all nice and perfectly crispy. Also adding in some good creamy, creamy avocado. Well, let's pray that it's a good one. <laughs> um, also, talking about kimchi, I know a lot of people in the UK struggle to find good vegan kimchi that's like not too hot and doesn't blow your head off. But this one is the one that I use. Oops, it's upside down. So yeah, if you live in the UK, Waitrose is where it's at for kimchi anyway. The rest of the stuff is hella expensive, but kimchi, they got you covered. All right guys, so for the sauce, obviously we're gonna need some more good liquid gold. I've got one fat clove of garlic, a little bit of ginger. I don't like to put too much ginger because then it just kind of overwhelms everything else and you can only taste ginger. Um, I have got some raw carrot, little bit, of maple syrup for sweetness, just the tiniest bit of toasted sesame oil. This is something that you definitely only need like a tiny drop and it gives so much intense nutty flavor. I just love it. And some water to thin um, and some salt too. You look at that creamy, creamy golden sunshine. This is bringing me sunshine on a rainy day. Mm. All right, here's the final result before we douse it in the sauce. So the base of this is two large heads of romaine. Yes, this is a giant bowl. You all know I love my romaine, that refreshing crunch. And then we've got the crispy tofu, soft avocado, the spicy kimchi, lots of crunchy pine nuts. Yeah, so I mean, it's a very simple salad, yet full of goodness, proteins, healthy fats. Kimchi is so good for your gut, lots of greens, but the best part, let's douse it in some of the dressing. And honestly, this dressing has come out absolutely perfect. It's actually the first time that I tried it, um, but it's bomb. So I'll leave the full exact measurements that I use down below. Cheers. Mate, that flavor. And by now, you should all know what's coming next. <laughs> Alrighty, we are back once back once again with the renegade. Back once again with the renegade master. So once again, I am bringing to you another fabulous creation from the brand Naughty. They hook me up all the time. All their flavors are bomb. I can't recommend their nut butters enough. Not sponsored at all. They just seem to like living life on the edge. You know, they just send these to me for harsh reviews, and I'm here to provide. So today we have got their chocolate orange peanut butter. Peanut butter. The ingredients, peanuts, raw cacao powder, coconut sugar, orange oil, sea salt. Yeah. I will say all of their nut butters are very sweet, but sweet in the most beautiful way possible. I'm not one to really like sweet nut butters. I prefer them kind of salty, but theirs just always have the perfect balance of like sweet and salt and, oh. and also they're making like good sized pots now. I mean, I know this is gonna be a thick one. Oh, fuck's sake. Oh, look at that, damn. She thick. But, I mean, this is peanut butter. Don't forget peanut butter is never gonna be like runny runny. Um, I'm impressed. It does smell like orange Nutella. <sighs> Man, I love chocolate orange. I miss Terry's chocolate orange so much. Cheers. Oh Lord, what? I mean, my fellow Brits that are watching this, if you've gone vegan and you know, you know the struggle of missing Terry's chocolate orange, this is it right here. I love the texture. I love the perfect balance between sweet and salty. Yeah, like this is the kind of thing, like even if you cracked it open on date night, like you just would not share. Mm. Oh my God. Anyways, I'll see you at dinner. Okay guys, I'm not gonna lie. My dinner on this night was the most boring thing ever. I literally just had avocado and Marmite on toast and a protein shake. So I'm gonna show you what I ate on another evening this week instead, as it's much more exciting. And also I've been wanting to show you this amazing vegan pizza restaurant called Pureza for ages. They make the best vegan pizza I've ever had in my life. So here we go. And also it was a bit of a monumental moment in time as this was the first time reconnecting with one of my best friends in the world, Brianna, in almost two years. She's actually the reason I even started YouTube in the first place and I'm beyond grateful to have her back in my life. So the whole menu at Pereza is bomb. So many different options. They make their pizza with a whole grain crust but you can also opt for a hemp one, a gluten-free one, the whole shebang.
We got three different pizzas to share, a pesto one, a creamy potato one, and I'm not sure what the third one was, but all three were insanely tasty. Although I must say, even though I'm very adamant that a pizza must have a red sauce, the potato one was actually surprisingly the best. So yeah. What I love about this place is that you actually come out feeling full because their portion sizes are decent, even by my standards. And one of the really sweet waitresses who I guess knew me from YouTube brought us some of these melty cheesy bread balls with different vegan mayos to dip in and they were so good. I don't even like vegan cheese, but their vegan cheese is just perfect. It's like melt in your mouth perfect. So yeah, it was basically dinner of bread, bread, and then more bread but it's food for the soul, which we all need from time to time. Oh, and they also do sweet dessert pizzas with things like Oreos on top, but we didn't try any this night. So yeah, if you're ever in London, make sure you visit this place because it's honestly the best vegan pizza in the world. Anyways, guys, as always, I'm sending you all so much love and I'll see you on the next video. Laters.